wellness, career, service, whole you, insights on living a balanced, purposeful life. Hello and welcome to the Whole You Podcast. I'm Shannon O'Brien, founder of Whole You Career and Life Strategy. In these discussions, we explore how to pursue our life's work and live a balanced, purposeful life. We dive into topics of wellness, of mind, body, and spirit, career, and service. And today's topic is all about wellness and specifically focuses on the mind, or more accurately, your brain. And to further enlighten us on this topic, I'm thrilled to welcome Ildiko Varhei. Ildiko is the founder of Neurocentric Health and Fitness, LLC. She is a neurocentric practitioner who believes that compromised brain function leads to compromised movement patterns and compromised thinking, creating injuries, pain, and emotional and mental strain. All of Ildiko's practices apply neuroanatomy as she examines how well an individual's nervous system is working. Her degrees and certifications include physical therapy, massage therapy, and kinesio taping. And she is a Z Health Master Trainer, Movement Re-Education Specialist, Biosignature Practitioner, a Certified Personal Trainer, and a Registered Yoga Teacher, which is actually how I know Ildiko. I am a devoted student of her weekly yin yoga class. And let me tell you, she is certainly a wealth of knowledge and information, and I'm so excited to have her on the Whole You podcast today. Welcome, Ildiko. Thank you so much for having me. It's always a privilege to share to make people's lives better, to create better movement habits, and just to be healthier. Well, we are privileged to have you. Your class keeps our bodies, therefore our minds, in check. So that's actually what we're talking about today, is the linkage between the mind and the body. One of your core beliefs is that a fit brain equals a fit body, but can you explain exactly what you mean by that? Sure. So when we think of fitness, we usually just think about the body. We think about the well-toned body, toned arms, toned legs, toned buttocks, and six-pack abs, all right? New Year's is here. I'm just going to get my New Year's resolution going, and I'm going down to the gym, sign up for a workout or for a class, and that will take care of that. Well, this is a little more complicated. In order to be able to get fit, we have to move well and efficiently. We usually just think that if we get our muscles stronger, that will actually happen. But what guides our muscles and how we move and also how we think is our brain and our nervous system. Mm. Our movement, just like everything else we do, is a direct reflection of how well our nervous system and brain work. When the brain is compromised and is not working at its highest possible level, our movement patterns and our ability to think and to make great executive decisions will also be compromised. All limitations, I believe, tightness, inflexibility, joint misalignment, poor posture, chronic pain, balance issues, they are all have something in common, and that means that they all originate in the brain. They all have a neural tag. So first we need to, in order to be able to get fit, we need to prime our nervous system and brain so that neural tag can be removed. Proper movement is the prerequisite to fitness, and the well-functioning brain is the prerequisite to proper movement. Movement is essential, fitness is optional. Hmm. I have to admit that I'm in that category of people that thinks of fitness as attractive muscles, and I rarely consider my brain when I think of a fit body. But that's obviously what you're basing your neurocentric work and your studio on now. Can you tell us how it started and how you became interested in this approach? I can say very confidently that neurocentric started way before I opened my studio. I have always moved. When I was a kid, I played different sports. I played elite basketball in Hungary. I loved it. When I came to the U.S. about 20 years ago, I started to work as a personal trainer. And I met a lot of people, a lot of clients, and they all came to me with different injuries. And um, I also had some injuries myself. And this kind of prompted me to 
figure out how can I do better. So I went to school for physical therapy, got a degree in physical therapy and in massage therapy and became a yoga teacher. And because I'm a curious person, I kept going on to other courses, getting other certifications, getting a little more knowledge. But I felt that there was something still not quite right. Something was missing. And about 10 years ago, I started to become interested in neuroanatomy, neuroscience. You know, I'm a little bit of a nerd. I like reading. And um, the more and more I studied the brain and the nervous system, I realized that everything we do and think and how we move is really, really our brain and our nervous system. And this is when I completely shifted my approach to how I do things. Since then, I started to apply neuroanatomy in all type of different practices. And um, whenever I teach yoga, I put some neuro in there. Whenever I uh, do a massage or I do some strength training or any kind of body re-education, there is definitely a nervous system-based approach through the eyes, through the balance system, through the proprioceptive system. And this has given me better faster and longer lasting results with clients and with myself too. So this is how Neurocentric started. It sounds like in your training, you went deeper and deeper as you went along into deeper levels of the body. You started as an athlete, then physical therapy, then massage therapy, I imagine bones and muscles, and now going into the nervous system and the brain. Is that the primary difference to your approach? Do you see other people doing this approach as well? Or how else does your approach differ from others? That's a very interesting question, Shannon. I keep going back and forth on this. And um, I can see that, um, you know, none of my previous degrees or certifications are wrong. They are just all based on a biomechanical approach. And a lot of fitness um, approaches, uh, different workout programs, they all based on the biomechanical approach and on the output. Movement is the output, strength is the output. So they all focusing on lifting that weight higher, pulling the hamstring closer so it gets a little more flexible. However, as I mentioned earlier, every single thing, movement, flexibility, chronic pain is an output from the brain. So if we want to change an output, we actually need to change the input. Hmm is where my approach start to be a little different than everybody else's. I will try to help the clients to create a better sensory system that can read the environment better. And we can re-educate all the senses if we need. We can focus on visual, vestibular, and the proprioceptive system. I mean, around you know how your eyes are moving, why you in movement, how your equilibrium system works while you in movement and how your sensory receptors in your feet, in your body, in your arms work in while you in movement. What people also kind of forget sometimes that our life is a constant movement. So even if we have a 2020 vision in the doctor's office, that doesn't really translate to dynamic movement outside in the world when every single second we have so many sensory input and we need to adjust our body position to that. So I would say that this is the uh, main difference. My goal is to create better movement through this sensory re-education, since movement is the basic currency of life, basic currency of fitness, and basic currency of athletic performance. It sounds very scientific. Again, not what most people are thinking when they're going to the gym trying to get a six-pack. And it's prompting me to think of workouts in a new way, but I'm trying to visualize what this sensory education would actually look like. Can you give us an example of an exercise that you would do with a client that might be different from what they typically do at the gym? You don't really need to change your, your exercise regimen. You might want to add a little bit of work with your eyes. So for example, when you start in some lunges, you would look to obviously I would have to check where your eyes are doing well and which position they don't do well. So I would give you a target to look to a certain position while you lunge in forward. I would I might give you a different target while you lunge in sideways or backwards. I would ask you to 
look up while you're doing a pull-up to a certain extent until you bring your arm, bring your shoulders high, bring your elbows higher or your body higher. And then I would tell you to look down. So the eyes have this reflexive ability to position the body into a more advantage or disadvantage system. And if we use this to create more strength or more mobility, you can actually get that six packs much quicker. I don't think people are thinking about their eyes when they're working out. Well, maybe looking ahead, checking themselves out in the mirror, but who do you think this neurocentric approach is for? Is it for everybody or is there a particular type of client that you think benefits most from this type of training? Well, I would like to say that everybody has a brain, all right? And yeah. actually, I think everybody should have a neurocentric approach. If you want to get better, at what you're doing. It doesn't matter if it's a movement, if it's a sport, if you just want to be a better um, decision maker. You know, everything is driven by our nervous system. So everybody, maybe you just start in a new fitness regimen, all right? New Year's is here, order a New Year's resolution. I'm going to go to the gym five times a day. Instead of jumping into a routine, you want to make sure that you do some preparatory work, some prehab, as I say in class, and you heard me saying that, do the prehab before you have to do the rehab. Because And we don't even know, the body and the brain doesn't know how to move without weights, just with the body weight, is not going to be able to handle the load before or later we get hurt and we're going to stop working out. So here goes the six pack again. <laughs> Uh, I would also add that people who have been having chronic pain, Shannon, mm. who have been having recurring injuries to the same side of the body, always spraining the same ankle, always for the same hamstring. This is where I talked about earlier a little bit in the brain. We have that um, blockage, that neuro tag. So mm-hmm. come in for an assessment that what I would try to find that little neuro tag and make sure that we can switch that So next time you go out for a run or you do some deadlifts or squat, you wouldn't pull your hamstring. Some athletes who have been struggling to make, to get to the next step, uh, let's say basketball, since I have been playing basketball for a long time. Stuff before, I would have been able to dunk with no no question on my mind. The jump just went to a certain, certain height. I can't even remember what it was, but it was not good enough to dunk. However, and I trained and I did strength and I did flexibility and power and everything. And if I just knew that with some eye work, I can actually increase those reflexes or make better those reflexes that help me to jump higher, I probably could have done that. Hmm. So you want to run faster or jump higher or throw stronger, Eurocentric approach is for you. Well, I personally can't wait to come in and try a session with you. I did see your studio for the first time and it's absolutely gorgeous. You did such an incredible job creating it. Can you tell our listeners how they can find out more about you? And also if they wanted to come in to visit your studio, what are the details? I do have a new website, neurocentrichealth.boston. You could find me on Instagram, neurocentrichealth, all one word. You could find me on Facebook. That is actually my full name, Ildiko Varhei. And um, the website contains all the telephone numbers and the email information. Yes, and the studio is in downtown Boston, 50 Franklin Street, fourth floor. Great. I will provide all of those links in the show notes. And please tell people what they will actually experience when they visit your beautiful studio, because I was so intrigued to find out that in a previous lifetime, you were actually an architect. So tell us a bit about some of the choices you made. Oh, thank you. I, I am very proud of the studio. It was, um, it is a um, small space, um, see over six, just over 600 foot square foot space. Um, we don't wear shoes in there. It's all barefoot. When you come in, hardwood floor, bamboo floor. Yeah. Um, but the exercises are on barefoot. I don't actually have any weights, but I have ropes and rings hanging from the ceiling. So you can, and the ceilings are 17 feet high. So you can get a good strength workout in there, but I want to make sure that you can extend your arm safely before you actually start pulling up on that rope. 
Mm. So safety comes first, proper mobility comes first. And if you want to see some of the stuff that we do in there, I do have a YouTube channel, it's Neurocentric Health. And you can see short bursts of videos that I have been working with clients or myself put in that on the YouTube channel. Perfect. And I saw a video that gives viewers a little tour of your studio as well, which was very beautifully done. So I'll, uh, I'll include that as well. And you also have some educational workshops coming up. Do you want to share a bit about those? Sure, Shannon. That is actually the last Sunday of every month. Yes, I will be offering a 90-minute free forum. So people would come in. It starts at 4 o'clock. I would give a little bit of a lecture on neurocentric approach and maybe every Sunday on a different part, one day just to talking about the eyes, how they connected to the brain and the movement. One day just talking about the breath, how it's connected to the brain, to the movement and to the eyes. And then we would do some movement or some exercises or drills that people can actually take away from that particular subject. And then we would have question and answer. So I truly encourage people to come in, bring all the questions. There are no silly questions. This is how we learn. This, this is how we act. This is how we really learn about our body and our brain, how they work together. So those forums are free every last Sunday of the month. You, can, you do need to sign up because space is limited. So please go on the website and sign up. And also I will be doing some workshops, um, Saturdays or Sunday afternoons for a couple of hours. Those are specifically designed to back injuries, back pain, breathing, or um, sciatic injuries. You can also find those educational courses that is for a fee. And I think you mentioned that little video and that is actually for the free your spine. If anybody has any kind of back pain or spinal distortion, or just bad posture, this would be something that you might want to look into. You know, another workshop on learn how to balance again. Be really afraid of falling. The older we get, the more risk kind of there that we don't catch ourselves that well. So there is going to be a workshop on how to learn how to balance again, just like when we were kids. It sounds like you have lots of great options and those free forums sound like a perfect introduction. And again, I love that theme you keep reminding us of in class, do the prehab so you avoid the rehab. Keep your body strong and flexible to avoid injury because we all know what a drag it is. If one thing, your ankle, your foot is injured, it disrupts your whole life. Is there anything else you'd like to share or, or talk about before we wrap up? I just want to encourage everyone that, you know, we can be so much better in our life. We can be so much more energized and move much better than we think we can. Just leave your old beliefs behind you. Have a little bit of curiosity and see what if. What if I do some eye circles and my squat is going to get better and I can ski better? because my butt is stronger. So just, just really, really keep an open mind. Don't worry about, you know, if the exercise is weird or you never heard of it. <laughs> to improve, you can always improve. I always say, as long as you breathe and you're conscious, you can make improvement. Mm. Everything is a skill, so everything can be learned. On the other hand, everything can be unlearned if we're not practicing. Great advice for us to leave our ego the door, open our mind, open our brain, and learn more about Neurocentric and your approach. Thank you so much for your time and sharing all of this information with our listeners. I look forward to class next Tuesday and also look forward to coming into your studio again soon. That address again is 50 Franklin Street, fourth floor, Neurocentric Health and Fitness LLC. For those of you in Boston, it's T accessible and really conveniently located right downtown. And for those of you who don't live in Boston, it may be worth a trip to come in for one of these workshops or to set up a session with Ildiko. Thank you so much, Ildiko. Thank you so much, Shannon. I hope you enjoyed that chat about how a fit brain equals a fit body. For more insights on wellness, career, and service, check out wholeyou.info slash blog. You may also want to schedule a work-life balance advising session, which you can do over at www.wholeyou.info. Thanks for listening, and I'm wishing you a balanced, purposeful day.